The next stimulus to Isler that I want to talk about is Felix Candela and the way that Candela expressed thinness. Isler came upon Candela and his designs through the cover of a book that he saw in Zurich. And it was this image of the restaurant Los Manantiales in Xochimilco that really inspired Isler to express the thinness in his shell designs. Candela used geometric forms and Isler generally did not. There are some cases like this Wyss Garden Center where he used a translational form, which is a geometric form. And for this shell structure, he had to use on the four sides, the stiffeners to stiffen the shell very similar to what Eduardo Toroja did at the Algeciras Market Hall. He made a similar design to the Wyss Garden Center out in France. And so here you see the expression of thinness that Isler was seeking through these designs of the shells. But geometric forms weren't Isler's two favorite form-finding methods. The first was the pneumatic form, the inflated membrane that we just spoke about. And the second was the hanging membrane, which was in pure compression that I'll speak about next. There was a third form finding method that Isler used that I will not cover in this lecture because he did not favor it very much. And that was where he extruded polyurethane foam through a square tube. Let me describe to you the second form finding method that he favored, the hanging membrane form. And just like the pillow idea for the inflated membrane came to him at an unexpected moment, so did this hanging membrane idea. It was at a construction site where he saw burlap hanging over steel rebars after rain had fallen. This burlap wet would hang in tension between that reinforcing steel. And he had the idea that if he could freeze that shape and turn it upside down, that burlap would then be in pure compression, which was the favored method of carrying stresses for reinforced concrete. He began to play with this idea out in the cold Swiss air using garden netting, spraying that netting with water and letting it freeze overnight. So these ideas of that burlap, he brought now to a larger scale through garden netting. And then he would play with those ideas in his laboratory, in his space where you see the image of Isler and those hanging fabric forms that he would later use to find forms for his full scale structures. The way that he would find forms for his structures in his laboratory is to take fabric, wet the fabric with plaster, lower the supports so that fabric in these images, for example, would hang on a string on the four corners. And then while it's hanging, let that plaster dry. When this fabric is hanging with the wet plaster, it's going to be in pure tension because the fabric and the wet plaster cannot take any compressive loads. Once that plaster hardens, we could turn that model upside down and under gravity loads, it will carry pure compression. In addition, this fabric forms natural stiffeners as they hang over when it's wet over the sides. And these stiffeners provide additional stiffness to that shell form. In this image of the structure under construction, you see these mechanical connections that are in place between those fiber boards and what is going to be the reinforced concrete. But before the reinforced concrete is poured, reinforcing steel is placed on top of these fiber boards to ensure more structural continuity and strength for that concrete against creep and shrinkage. This shell shown under construction was used for a swimming pool in Bruch, and you see that pool, people enjoying the pool and the view from the outside and how well these structures also integrate into the environment of Switzerland. To keep the structure in equilibrium and to keep the shell from flattening, some pre-stressed ties are in place and they are below the shell structure. So connecting the four corners, pre-stressed ties hold the shell structure together. In contrast, his bread and butter form, that pneumatic inflated membrane form, we have pre-stressed ties above the ground. So there's a very different expression here between the hanging membrane and the pneumatic form where the pre-stressed ties of the pneumatic form hide that thinness of the shell. And this is what left Isler unsatisfied. Whereas with the hanging membrane form on the right, the pre-stressed ties are below the shell so that thinness can be expressed. 
The hanging membrane form is not limited to a four-point support. There are limitless opportunities for using these hanging membrane forms. For example, for the outdoor theater at Grotzingen in 1977, he used a five-point support. And that is the model that's behind me. A few years ago, some Princeton students studied this outdoor theater and made a nice video of it. And if you're interested in learning more, you can go to this website, shells.princeton.edu, and find a video of that theater. So we looked at four-point supports and five-point supports. And for the BP station, he used a three-point support. This was in 1968. These are two coverings for a gas station, and you see this elegant three-point supported shell. It looks like the wind is underneath, lifting the shell like a sail. The Kresge Auditorium at MIT is another structure that looks like a three-point supported structure, but actually supported all along the perimeter through the mullions that also support the glass. This structure, the shape comes from an eighth of a hemisphere, and you see the sketch there showing the darkened space is where that shape for the Kresge came from. We know that for these hemispherical domes, we have hoop stresses and meridian stresses. This is something that was covered during the German shells lecture. And if we look at an image of the Kresge Auditorium under construction, we can see clearly how those hoop stresses would be interrupted, for example, as they try to go around this hemisphere of a dome. Therefore, the mullions support the structure all along the perimeter, and while it looks like a three-point supported structure, it actually is not. We have examined three-point, four-point, and five-point supported shells. Now let's look at the most complex hanging form Isler designed, a seven-point supported shell with a complex architectural program. The three-point, four-point, and five-point supported shells while they looked simple, they actually were not very simple to arrive at the form or construct or build. And that was Eastler's secret, how he did it. He made it look very simple, but again, he's examining all aspects of the design, not only finding the form, finding a way to build it, and observing their performance over time. Now we're gonna look at the seven-point supported shell, the Seekly building of 1969, which is an Eastler masterpiece. It was a complex architectural program. It was an office building. It had an interior court, an exterior garden. It was a warehouse. So there was a lot happening inside of that space. And the solution structurally and architecturally was an integrated solution. For example, it was a single thin shell vault supported on seven points. Beneath it, the red lines of this sketch shown on the screen indicates the points of pre-stressing. The pre-stressing ties that kept the shell in equilibrium and kept the shell from going flat and collapsing. And finally, there was visual expression, that expression of thinness that he was seeking after seeing Candela's designs, and also the expression of bare concrete that needed no waterproofing. A cross-section of the shell shows that again, the post-tensioning is below. And in this image, you also see David Billington who visited the Seekly building and is searching for cracks, but he cannot find any. Not only is David Billington looking for cracks, but again, Eastler continues to examine his shells after they're completed to look for cracks and measure those deformations. Images of the shell under construction are perhaps the most spectacular images of the structure itself. Again, like the BP station and the other hanging forms, it looks like a sail, it looks like fabric and wind that is lifting up this fabric. And you can see clearly that it's supported on those seven points. Once the glass encases or encloses the building, it has a different image, but it's still expressing that thinness of the shell that Eastler was seeking. Eastler placed holes in his form-finding models. Those holes would act as light wells into the space. And you see this lip or the stiffener that naturally forms from that hanging membrane process, forming again a stiffness around this hole where extra stiffness is needed. Through the creation of his form finding shape for the shell, he was able to create also an exterior space where there's an exterior garden, also forming an integral part of the whole architectural complex. I visited the Seekly building recently, and almost 50 years later after its construction, 
it's still in excellent shape. You see, of course, the expression of the thinness, but you also do not see any form of cracking or deterioration in the shell. I was able to touch the fiberboard that forms that inner insulation as well. And so you get a sense of scale with my hand against that fiberboard and what it looks like and the texture that is there. And on the inside, there is a large open space with lots of natural lighting coming in through those holes that he placed in his form finding methods. Another masterpiece of Eastler's worth mentioning in this lecture is the Heimberg Tennis Center, also behind me in the Friends Center lobby. Between 1979 and 2000, Eastler designed around 50 such shells. These shells were a little bit tricky, a little bit more challenging to design because it's so long and therefore buckling is an issue. For Heimberg, even though the four shells look very similar, there are very small differences between the four of them, which he designed purposefully so that over time he could measure the different deflections of these four shells and determine which one was the best. And the way he determined which one was the best was the one that deflected the least. Again, Switzerland is a harsh environment and sometimes I'm asked, can these shells really survive in harsh environments? And through these images of these shells under construction and knowing that, again, almost 50 years later, they're still in great shape, we know that the answer to that question is yes, these shells are durable and they can withstand very difficult climates. Easter shells were about three inches thick, but again, within the scale of the structure itself, it is an extremely thin shell and it still expresses that thinness. The Heimberg Tennis Center shells were about 48 meters long and 18.6 meters wide and about half the height. Again, a very long shell for a three inch thick concrete and it's endured over many decades and over harsh climates. David Billington used the Heimberg Tennis Center on the cover of two of his textbooks one on Heinz Eisler and the other on the art of structural design, a Swiss legacy, both of which were used for museum exhibitions. Nature was a large stimulus to Eisler. He respected it and learned from it. Next, we'll see more of Eisler's play with nature.